So now that we're hopefully more comfortable about the representations shown on the site chart with these loads and these load components, now we're going to look at some equations that are pretty standard in psychrometrics that are used for, for these different sensible latent and total pieces. So I've, I've put them here just to represent the, the Q sub T or, or the, the total load when we're looking at enthalpy, Q sub L and Q sub S for the latent and sensible components. So we're going to go a little bit more into where these numbers come from and which ones we use and how we use them, but I just want to kind of point out that the for our purposes, we're really going to be looking at the, the purple and the red, the, the total and the sensible. So there, there may be some applications where we do want to look at the latent component and calc that out separately, but I, I would say that's less used in commercial HVAC. So it's probably, probably suffices to say that for the any cooling that has dehumidification and sensible cooling, we're going to look at the, the total, and we're going to care about taking the enthalpy as the delta to plug into this calculation. And then for the sensible, for any heating process, or any cooling that is just sensible, meaning it's not wringing any water out of the air, we're going to look at that sensible component. So we may put a, a download or a link to a, a really clean list of all the psychrometric equations, but for now I've just listed them here with their different variables. So you see this, the Q sub T sub S sub L uh, I, I've broken out the mass flow version, really where all these come from for the Q sub S, and we're going to go into that in detail in a moment. But there's two for Q sub L that I've put here, one for the change in humidity ratio, which is in pounds of water per pound of dry air. There's the change in the, in, in the grains, where we may be looking at the grains of moisture. And then also there's that CBF, which stands for coil bypass factor. Uh, for now, the way that we've described dehumidification is where we're cooling the air till it gets to its its dew point, which is when it's 100% saturated. And then if you continue to cool, you're wringing the water out of the air. And we've been looking at that kind of right on the saturation line. But in reality, if you can imagine being a mass of air going through a coil, you know, there's fins and there's gaps. So you may be a piece of air that doesn't make direct contact with that coil and isn't going to be cooled to what they call the dry bulb apparatus dew point, which is the temperature of the coil surface itself. So not all the air is going to hit that, so some of it's going to bypass, and on the psych chart, that uh, that leaving air condition may be slightly offset from 100% relative humidity or saturated. But really, the one of the purposes of this video is is to derive some of these load-based equations just to understand and, and get a comfort for where those where those constants, where those conversion constants come from and how they may apply to commercial heating and cooling. So just to kind of walk through the derivation here, this is really where we would start from a thermodynamic standpoint where a, a, a load measured in, in BTUH or BTU per hour is equal to some mass flow in pounds per hour times the specific heat of that material, in this case standard air, and then times the, the change in temperature from before and after the process. So looking at standard air, we can break down that, uh, that mass flow value, and we can look at the, the CFM times the specific air density, and that's going to give you that, that same pound per unit of time mass flow. And when you plug numbers in there that we use for standard air, the 0 0.075 pounds per cubic feet for the specific density and for the specific heat of standard air we use 0 0.24 BTUs per pound per degree of that air. So when you plug all this in and calculate through you get that 1.08 conversion constant that's really going to be ubiquitous throughout the, the, the psychrometrics field when you're trying to do these easy equations. But, but does that really apply in all cases? How, how much can we depend on that number? Well, this is a pretty handy graph that kind of steps through how those constants change when you look at different temperatures. So what the density of air and what the specific heat of air actually is for dry and saturated air, as well as specific heat over a range of temperatures. So we can see here there's, there's a, a fair amount of fluctuation but when we look at the narrow bands that, that, that we may care about, so we may care in that blue band between 0 and, say, 
160 degrees and and there is some fluctuation there but if we shrink that to really what we what we're probably going to care more about is that kind of comfort application so looking between say 50 and and 110 we see that uh, there the specific heat is going to be fairly dependable and we're going to have a little bit of change but probably good enough for purposes of energy assessments and making determinations about how things how well things are sized so they're going to be pretty handy equations, but when you're rounding or when you're deciding how vehemently to discuss you know, some, of these, some of your findings and some of your equations, understand that there's limits to these constants and that they're assuming standard error conditions that are going to apply in many cases, but definitely think about how your density of air, how your temperatures, how your specific heats may be more specific than what these standard equations would apply. So I'll put them here as well. We're going to step through an example where we're using some of these equations and you're going to be practicing looking at the seg chart and using these equations to, to try to draw some conclusions about how much, how much load or energy is involved in a process. And then after that, we're going to try to answer this question. So keep this in the back of your mind about while we look at zone load, how that may apply to plant load. So say sizing a chiller is that how can we go from understanding or make an approximation about what load a zone sees to how the equipment handling that load needs to be sized.